Hey everybody, it's Dave Isaacs, and today I'm coming to you from the home studio in Hendersonville, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. And it's snowing today, so I've been home kind of holed up all day working on charts and tabs for a guitar class that I'm going to start teaching next week. And one of the songs that we're going to do is The Stones' Wild Horses. And I thought this would be a cool entry in the Essential Songs series. Now when you listen to it, you'll notice that the guitar parts do all kinds of cool interweaving things. It's not a straightforward song at all if you're following the actual parts. One of the things that makes the Stones so cool is the way the guitar parts intertwine together and work off each other. But the song also works just fine as a simple strummed part, and so we're going to take a look at that first, and then some of the details you can add in there to spice it up. So I'm starting off with a G chord. <laughs> And I'm using a version of G that I use a lot. This is a two-finger G chord. I have my ring finger on the third fret of the sixth string, my pinky on the third fret of the first string, and notice that I've got the pinky curled, so both knuckles are bent. I'm right on the fingertip. But the ring finger is more extended, so I'm sitting actually more on the pad on that bass string. And what that does is it gives me nice, strong leverage on the high note. I don't have to squeeze, it just holds that note down very securely. And the ring finger has the leverage that it needs because I do have to reach across. If I was over here on my fingertip, I'd have to drop the wrist in kind of an awkward way. But you see how this works with the finger extended, and I can mute out the fifth string. And the reason we're going to do that is that we're going to make use of some G suspended chords by adding in the index finger. And I don't want that to clash with this note. That just sounds muddy. But this is nice and clean. A minor seven. Now you could use a simple A minor. Two, a three, and four, and one, two, a three and four and down and down up down down up down down and down up down down up down but I do like the A minor seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is the intro. Now if you really want to get into which is actually on the recording, which is an A minor 11th. Ring finger, D string, 5th fret. Pinky, G string, 5th fret. Index, B string, 3rd fret, and open E. Put this together, we have a root A, a minor 7th, a minor 3rd, so together that's A minor 7. The D is the fourth of the scale, but since there's a seventh in the chord, we're going to call it an eleventh. And then the high E. We could also call it an A minor add eleven, or an A minor seven add four. There's a few ways to name it, but listen to how good this sounds alongside that G. That's cool. Notice when I'm strumming too, I'm not hitting everything exactly the same way each time. It's basically a back and forth. But sometimes I'm emphasizing the trebles a little more, sometimes I'm leaning on the basses a little more. You don't have to be so specific about it, but just know that to make a rhythm really sound good, you don't want to just back and forth and back and forth, because that sounds stiff. This makes it breathe. part just using the index finger here on the second string and there's a few ways we can do that there really fills 
So one and two and a three and four and four. One and two and three and four and. Or whatever you feel, really. The whole idea is to become fluid enough that you're not just repeating a static thing over and over again, right? But to keep it simple, I'm going to play more or less the strum that I used for the intro. One, B minor. Sus and G, B minor, and to G sus, A minor, C, and two and three, quick D, G, two, G sus and back, D, B minor. Sus, lift, and back to B minor. G, G sus, adding the index. A minor. We want to bring some dynamics to it now. C, and two, and three, and push a little on the D. G, so there's a sense of arrival. D chord, crescendo into the chorus. A minor. Actually, the 12 string on the recording does some nice fills using the middle finger on the second fret, and there's several of them. You can work on the third string, the fourth, the fifth, basically hammer-ons. That's a nice one. Let's see how that works. A hammer-on on the D string at the second fret going to the open G, and then hammer on on the G string. So listen to it in context. B minor. G. And notice that really I'm adding a strum, too. It's not just... It's not really a lead part. It's just worked into the strum. figure, right? So, fifth string hammer on. If I come back to that note, that sets up the A minor very nicely, or I can go down to the low G and that sets up the A minor, but I like the fifth string note. So, listen to how this all fits together with those hammer on licks. B minor, G, Back to the second fret of the fifth string sets up A minor. C. Now watch this. C and two and three and four and. Just picking an arpeggio across the D chord. Fourth string, third string, second and first together. That plus a little crescendo, a little build dynamically, really pushes us forward nicely. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Once again, the G suspended lick. One, two, a three, and four, and... So notice, da dee, da. 
da, da, da. See when the finger comes off? So here's this whole part, this is the second half of the verse. And two and three and four and C and two and three and four and two. B minor. Interlude in the middle of the song, F to a C. We can do a nice little hammer on with the middle finger on the D string on the C chord, too. on the D chord, coming out of this with a picked arpeggio on the C, or, that sounds good, string five, string four, and the remaining three strings, and then D, string four, string three, and the remaining two, into the G. So here's that interlude coming after the second chorus, F, C, there's F, back to C, and then the arpeggio, 5, 4. So when I say 5 and 4, I mean where the arpeggio is starting. 5th, 4th, and then 4th, 3rd. So it's this. You could use that in the chorus too, or in that second half of the verse. So I'm going to play the interlude, back into a verse, and a chorus, and out, like this. Coming into a chorus and three and four and two, three, four, C, two, C, D. And B minor, A minor.
nice way to end it. Arpeggio on the C, arpeggio on the D, and G. So that's a nice straightforward version of Wild Horses with some cool additional stuff added in. It's a lot of fun to play. Look down below in the description for the chart. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Sounds like my phone is buzzing, so I better grab that. Thank you for watching. I'm Dave Isaacs. I'll see you next time.